The Rodecaster Pro 2 firmware update 1.0.5 adds some new functionality which changes the way that we can use the Rodecaster Pro 2 with applications like Ecamm Live, Zoom, Teams, and Discord. And in this video, I'm going to explain to you what those features are so that you can understand how best to get things set up for your particular use case. And that's the key thing here. There is no one size fits all. It's more about just understanding the concepts so you can figure out the best way to get things set up for exactly what it is you want to do. I will, of course, be sharing my setup and what I'm using it for and how I've gone about that uh, and in doing that hopefully you will get a little bit more insight of how you can get things set up for what you want to do. Now, this isn't going to be a full overview of the uh, 1.0.5 release. Indeed, I've already made that video. I'll leave a link to it down in the description, as well as how to actually sign up for the beta program, because uh, at the time of recording, this is still a beta release, um, but it may have been uh, fully, fully released <laughs> by the time you watch this. So let's get into these new features, shall we? And they are all related to the USB cables that you've got on the back. There are two USB cables on the back of the Rodecaster Pro 2. Let's call them the primary and the secondary. Uh, so the primary is the one that you would need to connect to your computer in any case if you want to uh, maybe download the audio if you've recorded any to the, to the device on the SD card on the back uh, or to program the uh, smart pads. You can do it on the device here as well. Uh, but if you want to do that through the Rode Central app, you would need to be connected through this uh, primary USB cable, the main first USB cable. Uh, however, that's not what we're talking about today. We're specifically talking about the audio channels that we've got. And there are, in fact, two audio channels on that first USB cable. Uh, and they are called Rodecaster Pro 2 Main and Rodecaster Pro 2 Chat. That is how they appear on your system. Uh, there is also this second USB cable. You don't need to connect that to your computer. Uh, you could do, though. You can connect both of them. Or you could connect this to a second computer, in fact. And I'll be talking about why you might want to do that a little bit later as well. I do have both of these cables connected to my computer though, uh, and that effectively gives me three channels, which you can see down below, Rodecaster Pro, two, chat, main, and secondary. So why have I got six down there? Well, that's because uh, there is actually a new feature that has been added and it doesn't give you six channels <laughs> before you get excited, um, but it does actually change the behavior of that main channel. So you can see, whereas before in the previous firmware versions, it was just Rodecaster Pro 2 main, uh, now it may either show up as multi-track or stereo. So I think it's worth actually just covering this part first so that you understand exactly why that might be. So in the uh, previous version of the firmware, uh, basically over that uh, first main channel, it was actually sending out the multi-track mix. So it was sending every single individual track over that uh, USB. So let me just uh, maybe explain this a little bit better. If I come into the settings and I'll go to outputs, uh, then we've got multi-track. Uh, now, maybe it's worth explaining this from a point of view of just recording. So when you are recording to the device itself, um, you've got basically four different options or three and a three and a half maybe. <laughs> uh, the first one is uh, if you have this set to off, it means there's no multi-track recording. It's just going to record a single file. Uh, whatever inputs you've got coming into this, you've got audio sound effects on here. Maybe you've got two or three microphones plugged in, uh, and then you've adjusted different levels of different things on here. It's just going to record those down to a single file. So that would be multi-track is off. Um, but then you could have multi-track on. So you might want to record all of the individual tracks so that you can then do something with them later. Um, and the normal way that you might do that is to use this uh, pre-fader. And what that means is, uh, although you might be adjusting levels in here, maybe you're live streaming or something like that and things are going out and you want to make sure the mix is all right. But if you're going to go ahead later and do some editing and uh, maybe repurposing things, uh, then you might want all of those individual tracks without all of these different levels adjusted. Uh, and so that's what pre-fader is, basically pre-fader. So these are the faders before anything has been applied to them. It's just going to take all the raw signals uh, and then uh, record those. Now you can also here uh, opt to bypass processing as well. So bearing in mind that in the, the Rodecaster Pro 2, we've got a lot of really powerful audio processing that we can do to the signal as well. Um, so you can actually turn that one on to bypass that so that then it's basically really is just going to take the complete raw signal. So uh, you wouldn't have any compression or anything like that that you'd apply to it. You would then be able to do something with those after and maybe apply them after the fact. Uh, the other option though is post fader. Uh, and that is basically whatever you've got things set here, it's still going to record all of the individual tracks separately. Uh, however, if you've, you know, lowered the, uh, the volume down here, uh, then it would be lower in the, uh, in the recording as well. So hence the little warning sign there. Do you really want to do this? Because it's going to affect the, the signal that's being recorded. So that is nothing new. That is just to explain to you the difference between, uh, you know, multi-track or not multi-track. Well, now over on the USB, so that was on recording. Previously on USB, we only had the option of pre 
pre-fader or post-fader. Um, we didn't have the option of it just being a stereo mix. That is the or one of the new features that has been added in in 1.0.5. Now, why would you want uh, that and which one should you have, you may ask? Well, if you are using a digital audio workstation, a door on your computer, uh, and you want all of these tracks going into it uh, so that you can then, you know, make adjustments, maybe you're recording it, maybe it's going into some other application, uh, Adobe Audition or something like that, where you're going to be, uh, you know, using all these separate tracks and you want to have full control over them, uh, then yes, you would want something that's uh, either pre-fader or post-fader uh, going in, a multi-track mix going in. However, if you are uh, if you don't know what a door is, <laughs> uh, then likely you can just switch this one off. Uh, or if you don't use one, you can switch what, this off. Certainly, I am going to leave this off because all I want is a stereo mix going out into uh, my computer because I'm just going to be basically taking everything that I've, I've got going on here. I just want it all mixed down into a single stereo mix. That's what's going to be used as my input for Ecamm Live, for Zoom, for anything else. I'm not doing any other fancy audio. So for me, um, then I'm going to switch this off on the USB. Uh, what you do on the recording is uh, is entirely up to you uh, but for me I'm going to switch that off because I don't really have a way of even recording the multi-tracks so that is uh, that is what I'm going to do there if you watched one of my previous videos uh, about the best setup for the Rocaster Pro 2 with Ecamm, uh, you may recall that uh, in the Ecamm Live settings in the audio tab, uh, there was this option here to map input channels one and two to left and right stereo. Uh, that was a requirement before uh, because it uh, it helped get around an issue where um, previously we were only getting the multi-track mix out. We weren't having this option of the stereo mix. That was the uh, solution to stop this. It had a slight issue that uh, where <laughs> the faders, even if you put the faders down, you would still have the audio coming through. So toggling that one on there fixed that issue. If you'd been using the Rocaster Pro 2 before with um, some things that work in browsers, uh, there was also an issue there with this multi-track uh, mix coming out over the USB. However, that has now been solved with this uh, this new uh, setting. So if you've come into your Rocaster Pro 2 and you've changed that to off, uh, then uh, you can still map channels one and two to left and right stereo, uh, but it's just not, uh, not quite as essential. But since you've got a stereo mix going out, it would make sense to do it. So I'm leaving that on for now. <laughs> Um, so that is all the about the different mix. Now, I should say then that just coming back to these names, what you'll see is uh, if you have got the multi-track on as either pre-fader or post-fader, um, it will show up as Rocaster Pro to main multi-track. Whereas if you've got it off, as I have now, it will show up as Rocaster Pro to main stereo, just on that main channel there. What you need to make sure, though, is if you do set your computer up and you've got different uh, you know, applications like Ecamm Live, for example, if you've got it set to one of those um, and then you go into your Rocaster Pro 2 and change from uh, you know, pre-fader and post-fader, change it to off, uh, then you might find that whatever devices in or whatever applications you'd got in your computer um, have then you know, defaulted to whatever your audio default is. So if I came into Ecamm, for example, selected Rocaster Pro 2 main multi-track as my microphone, I came in here and then I switched this over to switch it off, uh, then that, that device would just sort of disappear from my computer and Ecamm would just go to whatever the system default was. So just make sure that you get this set up as you want it and then set your audio settings. But that is not the most exciting feature. <laughs> the exciting feature is the fact that we now have mix minus on all of the channels. And in fact, we have something even better, but I'll come on to that in a while. First of all, what exactly is mix minus? Well, if you are using the Rocaster Pro 2 as both an input device and an output device for a particular application, let's take Zoom, uh, then you are, I've got in Zoom, you've got the Rocaster Pro 2 set as your microphone, uh, but also as the speaker, the audio, what you're hearing the audio from. Uh, and so Zoom is going to be sending the audio from all of the other participants, sending that into the Rocaster Pro 2. It's going to be then in the mix of uh, all of the different things that you've got coming into here with your microphone and everything like that. And then it's going to be going straight back into Zoom again as the microphone. And what that means is that anything that the participants are saying will just basically do a bit of a loop round, come straight back to them, and they'll hear themselves back uh, a moment or two later later. So what you need to do or what needs to happen is we need to remove the incoming signal on that particular channel from what's been sent down that channel again, uh, hence mix minus. We're removing it from the mix uh, and then they won't hear that, uh, that slap back. Now you should know that as well you won't actually hear anything in your in your monitors when you are listening to this. So it could be that the people on the other side are saying, I'm hearing echo. They'll always call it echo, not slapback. But uh, 
they'll say that and you'll wonder what's going on because you can't hear anything. It's because you're only hearing it once, but it's just making the return signal for them and they're the ones that are hearing it twice. So this applies to any communication app where you're using it as an input and output device. So Zoom, Teams, uh, Discord, Skype, whatever it happens to be. It also applies though to applications like Ecamm Live because Ecamm Live itself has built-in sound effects. So we might have a movie that we play as part of a scene. We might have uh, audio in uh, Ecamm itself. We've got sound effects that we can trigger within Ecamm from Ecamm. So those would be coming from Ecamm into the Rodecaster Pro 2, uh, but then they'd just be going straight back in again. So once again, when you're listening and recording, you wouldn't hear any issue. But then when you listen to the audio playback, um, you would hear a duplication of anything that was originating from within uh, Ecamm. And that includes, by the way, interview mode. So if you're using Ecamm Live in interview mode, uh, this is an issue. So that's where mix minus comes in we need to have mix minus switched on on any of these applications that have this two-way audio going on now what i should also say is if you're using these applications at the same time like with one another uh, so for example you might have somebody on on interview mode in ecamm live you're feeding that into a zoom call uh, and then there's people on the zoom there as well that are uh, communicating it's important that each single application has its own dedicated channel with mix minus on because bear in mind the mix minus it only removes it for that single channel so we want the zoom people to not hear themselves back but we do want them to hear anything that's going on in ecamm so if we had set those both to exactly the same channel um then it would be removing everything from zoom and everything from ecamm uh, and so the people in zoom wouldn't hear the ecamm if that makes sense so you need to make sure that However many different things you have got, you've got a separate dedicated mix minus channel for them. So whilst on the Rodecaster Pro 2, we do have um, two USB cables. Um, you don't necessarily have to use both of them. You could, as I say, just have the primary plugged in uh, and then maybe you might want to use the uh, the main channel. So just popping those up again. Uh, so you might have the, uh, the, the, the main might be for Ecamm Live and the chat might be for Zoom. Uh, and by the way, system audio, it doesn't necessarily matter if you have these on any particular, any one of these particular channels, um, because um, it's, it's only a one way. So system audio doesn't really need to have mix minus. It's only where you are going into uh, some other thing. But just bear in mind that if you have uh, mix minus on the uh, system, or, uh, if you have the mix minus on the same channel as Ecamm Live, uh, then in the Ecamm Live settings, uh, what you would do is you would just come into here uh, and then you have this broadcast system audio. You'd need to make sure that uh, that was still set to uh, either when sharing the screen. Um, that's the, usually the default for Ecamm. Um, so you still are capturing it on Ecamm. Um, but if you had the uh, the system audio on another channel, uh, what you would want to do is just make sure that you turn this one off. So it says never. Um, so the Ecamm itself is not capturing system audio, um, but maybe you're bringing that into uh, one of the other channels uh, and then you've got that in the mix. So one way that you might want to use this is let's just say that you are using Ecamm Live uh, with Zoom and you also uh, have uh, system audio and you want that completely separate so that you can have control over that. Well, in that case, what you might do is from these three channels down below, uh, in fact, let me just move the one uh, with the mix just so that we don't start getting too confused. If I uh, remove, of course, I had a 50 or 50 chance and I removed the wrong one. <laughs> so here we've got these three channels, the chat, main and secondary. What you could do here is you could say, well, OK, let's have Ecamm Live as the main. Let's have uh, chat as the Zoom because people are talking uh, and let's have the secondary as being system audio. So what you would do there is you would uh, come into uh, Ecamm. You can see here I've got Rodecaster Pro 2 main set here. Um, I've also got in Ecamm uh, Rodecaster Pro 2 main stereo set as the source just down here as well. Uh, and then you would go into Zoom and you would set that to chat or secondary or whichever one you wanted. And then you would just set your system audio to the other one. Again, this is just assuming you've got both of these cables plugged in. Now, basically, you've got completely independent control over all of these three channels. So you can have them all on a separate fader. Um, and what you'd need to do, though, is just make sure that on your Ecamm channel and your Zoom channel that you do have mix minus turned on. So let's take a look at exactly how you do that. So let me just get this one out of the way. Uh, back over to the Rodecaster Pro 2. If I click on the settings and then I click on outputs and then I click on uh, 
<laughs> routing, that's the one, uh, routing. Um, then here you can see now we've basically got USB one at the top, that's main. Uh, this one is the chat channel. Uh, this one is the secondary channel. And by the way, this also applies to Bluetooth. So if you have got anything connected over Bluetooth, it also applies to that as well. So then uh, you can now choose between main uh, or mix minus. And this is what we always did have on the secondary channel, but now we've got it on the uh, main uh, chat and the secondary as well. So you just need to make sure that for anything that's uh, two-way communication, you've got mix minus turned on. They do have something here though, which is uh, this extra one here, which is custom. What that means is they give you basically full control over what you are sending out to each particular channel. And in fact, the way that this is set up here is uh, simulating mix minus effectively. You can see it's uh, this is the particular channel that I'm talking about. It's the USB one, the main. Uh, and then down here at the bottom, it's got all of the other different uh, channels uh, and it's got little ticks next to the ones that are included in the mix. And it's got a little cross next to any that are not. Uh, and they're sort of slightly grayed out as well. So at the moment, everything is going into the USB main except the USB main itself. So that's effectively simulating what mix minus is. It's taking everything in and it's sending everything back out except that one. Well, you could also say, uh, perhaps I don't want the zoom to be included. And let's say I'd got the zoom on the chat, for example. I might want to have a zoom call going in the background uh, that is kind of like a back channel where we're talking about stuff uh, or having people, you know, giving me information uh, whilst I am live streaming, for example. And I might just not want that going out into the uh, live stream. And in which case I could just simply click on this one and it would eliminate it. I would still be able to hear everything that was going on. And imagine if I had friends, I know it's hard to imagine, but imagine if I had friends and I was doing a podcast with them and we were all in the same room together uh, and we'd got two or three, uh, uh, microphones plugged in and we're all you know three of us plugged in on our headphones as well uh, what this would mean is that that zoom back channel they would all be able to hear that I'd be able to have full control over the audio so for what they could hear uh, but it just critically would not be going out into the mix which was going into Ecamm Live for the recording uh, for example so this is how this routing table works you can basically just choose anything that you want to go uh, to anywhere he says pressing the wrong button. <laughs> uh, so that's the, the the way that this works is you can basically just have complete freedom of what is going to where. Now there is another way to do this though because um, I'm actually using this as a sort of back channel as well. So what, the, what I'm doing with this is uh, I do have a Discord server and in fact, if you want to join the uh, Take One Tech community, you can join at takeonetech.io slash family, where we talk about uh, all the sorts of stuff that I talk about on this channel, in fact. Uh, and in fact, one of the uh, setups that I'm going to show you in a moment has come about because of a question that was asked in there, uh, which was slightly more complex and um, a slightly more complex use case, shall we say. But one thing that I set up in my Discord server was I wanted the ability through my uh, channel memberships, uh, cue the memberships, <laughs> you can join by clicking on the join button down below any of my videos or on my uh, channel homepage. Um, but at one of those membership levels, I actually have a thing called uh, on air backstage, which is basically whenever I'm live streaming to uh, whatever platform it happens to be, um, I want the ability to have a, uh, you know, basically live stream into the Discord as well uh, so that people can watch live, but then also ask questions and I can hear the questions uh, because I always feel a little bit di disjointed when I am on uh, on a live stream. When I see comments come in, maybe I look at them a little bit later, uh, they lose their context, I forget what they're in reference to and, and it's not really a full conversation. There's always the latency to deal with as well. Even if I think I've answered it, I say, does that answer the question? And then we're sitting there waiting while, uh, <laughs> while the internet does its thing and gets the uh, the message across. So uh, it is a little bit, um, uh, you know, it's not a real conversation, is it? Whereas I saw the opportunity, though, through the uh, Discord and through my memberships to open that up. So if I come over to uh, Discord just quickly, uh, what I'll show you is uh, here we are in the uh, Discord. Here are some of the topics and things like that that we talk about. It's free to join Discord, by the way, uh, just to uh, quickly pop that one up again. So you can easily come in here. We talk about all the sorts of topics that I talk about on the channel. Uh, but down here in the members area, we have this on air backstage. And so the way that works is basically I go live into uh, there before I go live on any other platform. Um, but then uh, it just sort of it's just using the Ecamm Live virtual camera. But then when I hit the go live button on Ecamm, 
it's uninterrupted into the on-air backstage area um, and then I can do my live stream when I start having more interview guests on and people like that uh, then people in the backstage area will be able to ask their questions and I'll be able to hear them as well uh, and then get those questions answered and then after I click end on the live stream uh, basically it still just continues on in the on-air backstage area so then any other questions that need to get asked for the uh, you know the person I'm interviewing or whatever from those members uh, they can get an asked answered I should say as well so the way that I'm doing that though is uh, very similar to what I've just shown you um, but the thing that I wanted was um, although I could have used this uh, routing table if I get the right scene up although I could have used the uh, routing table to basically eliminate uh, the chat from there you know the discord uh, I could have eliminated that from the main I actually don't want to eliminate it because I want the option of bringing those people into the mix a little bit later so the way that I'm doing that is this if I uh, just come out of here for a moment so the way I've got this set up is uh, I've only got mix minus on all of these channels. I haven't used the routing table uh, for what I'm doing right at the moment. I've just got the mix minus on. Uh, and so, in fact, the way that I've got it is this is my microphone. Uh, this is the uh, main channel. That's for Ecamm Live. Uh, this one is the chat, which actually I'm using for Discord. Uh, and this one here is the secondary, which I'm using for Zoom. So uh, hopefully it should be pretty obvious, but uh, you just literally go into Zoom, for example, uh, come into your speakers and you can see we've got Rodecaster Pro 2 secondary, we've got main, we've got chat. So I just come in here and select Rodecaster Pro 2 secondary for the uh, both the speakers and the microphone. Uh, and then if I come over to my uh, Discord, then in here, you just go into voice and video. Uh, and there you can see I've got Rodecaster Pro 2 chat and Rodecaster Pro 2 chat. So there are three individual channels. Now what I'm doing, and I'll come to the system audio in a minute, I've done a bit of a little bit of a trick there to give myself a fourth channel. Um, but what I'm doing then is uh, on the Rodecaster Pro 2 then, uh, I've got these four channels, uh, my microphone, Ecamm Live, Discord, and Zoom. So when I am on a live stream, I want to be able to hear what's going on in the chat, but I don't want it to go out into the mix. So if I press the um, mute here, that is basically muting that channel. So it's not going out into the mix. However, it's also muting it for me. So I can't hear what's going on. You'll notice the little light down there. It might not show up too well on the recording because it uh, didn't pick up the light as well, uh, but you can see it up here. It's got this little red symbol. So that shows that that channel is muted. So that would mean that if I was in Discord now as well, I'd be able to hear the people in Discord. Uh, oh, sorry, the, the people in Discord would be able to hear the live stream, I should say, but we wouldn't be able to hear them. So if you want to be able to hear them, though, you can hear any channel, even if it isn't included in the mix, by pressing this button here, which is the listen button. And the thing about doing that, though, is when I press that, it actually excludes all of the other tracks. So the idea behind these buttons here, these listen buttons, is that it's for you to be able to just hear that individual track. Maybe you might be playing music, you want, might want to cue some music up or something and get to the right place, or maybe you want to hear what somebody else is saying and just exclude everything that's going out. So for you, as the host, just this is only on the first channel here, the headphones channel, you can press the listen button uh, and listen to that channel at the exclusion of all others. However, you can actually just select multiple channels to listen to so in this case where I've got these four channels what I'm going to do is just actually press the listen button on all four of them now what that means is that I can hear myself back for, so I can monitor my microphone I can hear anything that's going on in Ecamm uh, I can also hear um, anything that's going on in the Discord uh, and I can also hear anything that was going on in Zoom if I had a Zoom call going. Uh, so this might be, for example, uh, running a workshop where I've got people coming in on interview mode in Ecamm. It's going into the uh, Zoom, but then maybe we've got a back channel with guest speakers and things like that uh, in Discord, for example. Um, so crucially, though, this one being muted, uh, although I can hear it, uh, it's not going out into the mix. But the thing about this, though, rather than using the routing table to sort of completely eliminate it, is this means that if I do have somebody from the Discord who uh, I want to bring up and ask a question, I probably wouldn't do it for like a back, back channel if it was a case of, uh, you know, running a workshop in Zoom where I'd got guest speakers coming up, uh, we'd have another way of bringing them on there. But certainly for this idea with the Discord where you want to bring people up to ask questions maybe during the live stream, or maybe you're doing an interview on the live stream and you want to take questions from the people in discord maybe bring them up on screen as well uh, with the ecamm then we could do that then what this means is all you need to do then is just actually take them off mute 
and then they come back into the mix and you can see that now those are all green because they are all uh, uh, I'm still listening to them all but I can just easily take one out of the mix if ever I want to do that same with the zoom you may, may maybe want to just eliminate the zoom from uh, you know the uh, from the recording um, but you still want to be able to hear what's going on in there but the other thing you can do if you've got it set up this way is um, they've got this thing in uh, the Rocaster Pro 2 whereby here I've got these two selected. If I select these two as well, they'll turn yellow. And what that means is that then only they are hearing me and I'm hearing them and it's not going out into the mix. So let's just say that we've got somebody in the back channel. Maybe I'm presenting something or I'm using Ecamm for something uh, and I'm playing a video. And whilst the video is playing, I want to be able to say something to these people in the back channel without it going out into the broadcast. I would just press this button and you'll notice that both of these then turn yellow. They turn yellow up there as well. So whilst I did that, you couldn't hear me, but it was only going to this back channel. So whilst I really love the routing table and that ability to be able to have much more control over things is really great. Uh, for me personally, I'm going to stick to this way of doing it just because it gives me that extra ver versatility of being able to just easily, you know, bring somebody into the mix, drop them back out of the mix and so on. So that's how I'm using it. But I mentioned that I do have another little trick up my sleeve, and that is that in addition to the three USB channels that we've got, uh, I'm also taking a, th a fourth <laughs> from the computer into the Rodecaster and uh, you could do this in a number of ways and probably the way that I'm doing it is not really the most efficient but uh, I am in the early stages of this <laughs> so uh, what I've got here is um, this is basically taking USB uh, it takes either a microphone or headphones and converts them to USB. I actually use this when I'm on the road. I use it for just plugging in a lav mic and headphones when I'm on Zoom, uh, a Zoom call uh, when I want to get a slightly better audio and I don't have a full setup with me. So that's what this is for. Uh, but basically, all you need to know is I've basically taking uh, the headphones, the audio from the system, uh, and I'm taking that into the back, into the uh, into the Rocaster Pro 2 at the back here. So just using uh, one of these uh, TRS cables, uh, and then it's into one of these to take up the side a bit size and that will then plug into one of these uh, combo jacks at the back. Now what I will do is I'll get a the proper cable which will be a um, an XLR uh, and then I'll run the XLR cable to go to the computer uh, and then I'll have a XLR to TRRS, TRRS being <laughs> these little ones uh, to take it down to that size and then I'll just plug this straight into the headphones of my computer. The only reason I'm using this which is a bit of a workaround at the moment is just because I literally don't have the cable <laughs> to do this. I do have some longer ones of these which I could in theory plug in uh, but you tend to get a bit of in interference on those. They're not the best cables to run any real length and certainly not for any sort of quality audio that you want going in and out. So uh, that's just my lack of cables. I need to uh, sort out my cable gain. Uh, game. <laughs> but what this is effectively doing is this is now showing up as another device and I'm on my computer for my output. So this is what I've got selected as my system uh, speakers. Just the same as if I was uh, plugged into the back of my uh, Mac Mini with a cable, I could just set, you know, set the output to headphones. What this means though is I've got microphone, I've got Ecamm, I've got uh, Skype, <laughs> Skype, Discord, and I've got Zoom, too many communications. Uh, and then there's this one here. So if I just pop over to, uh, let's go over to Epidemic, play some random playlist. Uh, and now uh, you should not be hearing that. However, if I come back over here, to this one again now we've got system audio and i can just introduce that into the mix and that should in theory uh be coming through onto onto uh, the audio you can see obviously there it's bouncing up and down and so now i've basically got complete control over all the audio over four different channels and so you can probably see how you might want to be able to use this i'm not suggesting that <laughs> you go and replicate all of this it's really to just demonstrate the uh, principles of it and the core thing to remember here is uh, any communication apps that require two-way audio you need to make sure you've got mix minus switched on for those uh, and then if you are 
using two different applications at the same time together that need to be able to talk with one another, like Ecamm Live with Zoom or something like that, um, then just make sure that they have got their own dedicated channel. You don't need to split out the system audio onto its, its own channel. You could just li run the system audio onto any one of those channels and that would be, uh, that would be fine because it's only sort of one way. Um, I'm doing it this way just because I do want that extra control over the system audio uh, separate to all of the other ones. Um, so we have got those three channels, but then, yeah, we have always got these other uh, connectors at the back that we can utilize as well if we, uh, if we have the right cables, that is. I hope you found that useful. I'll leave a link to some of my other uh, Rodecaster Pro 2 videos over on the uh, right-hand side, and I'll see you in there. <laughs>